Amazing speaker, uh, Sania Qureshi, and we all know Sania. She Sania is the board member of our Congress. So, obviously, Pakistanis, but actually, her area of expertise is uh, the British civil services. That's that she took up, and uh, she is uh, uh, the strategy advisor for the Department for Work and Pension. And yes, um, uh, she has been at the British Pakistani Foundation. She is uh, with the World Congress of Overseas, uh, World Congress of Overseas Pakistanis, and she's done amazing stuff. And today, actually, she'll be um, <coughs> opening doors for uh, the British civil services for all the others who want to get in touch. So, big round of applause. Particularly, I would like, we, 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 know, we know this story, you, you can quickly refer over to, but the real thing, um, why we, the British Pakistanis, are not much visible in the civil services. How can all these bright people get over there? And how can actually we get them on hand? Great. Thank you, Arif, and Zalikum, everyone. Good afternoon. Could I just ask everyone just to stand for a minute, please? And could I ask you all to shake the hand of the person next to you? Shake your pick. Take your pick. Thank you. Great. I feel the love. You can take a seat now. Yeah. Never the reason I asked you to do that is um, it never ceases to disappoint me, the fact that we don't see each other as comrades, as collaborators, as partners in crime. And for all of you sat here, it starts now. In pursuit of your net worth, I do urge you to also look up your net work. Because uh, as Akka said, uh, the people you take with you, the people you collaborate with you, are going to be your makers too. So, and it's something I just do not see happening in the Pakistani community. Now, coming back to your question, Arif, thank you. I started my civil service career a very long time ago uh, when I had uh, just arrived uh, from Lahore. I had a Punjab University group degree in my hand. My childhood was in London, but uh, all my teens was in Lahore. So I came back uh, with family. I didn't know anything about the local labor market. I, I was in London in the 91 recession, so jobs for someone who had just come from Pakistan without a local degree were nigh impossible. I'm a, a huge believer in, in God, and I do believe where I am at today have been all the opportunities given by Him. I walked into my local job center and uh, looking for a job, and once I was looking at the boards in those days, which is a very long time ago, uh, it was all manually displayed. And whilst I was looking at the job vacancies, the uh, manager of the branch came up to me, middle-aged Englishman, uh, intrigued by this uh, very kind of timid Pakistani uh, girl who was kind of like uh, shifting around, not sure what to pick up. And he said, are you looking for a job? I said, yeah. He goes, do you want to work here? I said, really? Uh, but this is the civil service. Uh, he goes, yeah, I'll, I can put you on a test application uh, sort of system. If you pass, you've got a job. I couldn't believe my, uh, what I just heard. I said, okay, this white guy is giving me a break, and he has n no idea who I am. Um, I've just walked into uh, a job center. I couldn't believe it. So I thought, no, this, this is not for real, or maybe I won't pass the test. You know, the typical, again, Pakistani sense of... Uh, I'm not worthy. Um, I was I was very young as well, so I 
sat the test, I passed it, and I got the job. And I haven't looked back since. So from working on a front line in a Kingston job center office, my last role within the DWP was working for G20, representing Her Majesty's government in Russia, working in policy strategy. I worked through operations right up to central office in St. James. And I can tell you, it's not been an easy ride. I do not see brown faces uh, in a middle to senior management still, and I'm talking 25 years down the line. Uh, nothing much has changed significantly. There's a lot of tokenism, but that does not put us off. That is just one more challenge to stick under your belt and say, yeah, I'm going to make it happen, but I need some help to make that happen. So what's the help you need to seek? Uh, for me, it was always a, a, the ability to identify a strong mentor within senior management that is very key for any career path you choose, uh, same as within the civil service. Civil service is a very hierarchical, very white, very bureaucratic system, and we're talking about England still. It is that way. There's very much a glass ceiling. There is very much a push uh, to recruit Oxbridge graduates. Uh, and we already know there aren't many brown faces in, in Cambridge and Oxford either. So the avenues, the framework that's set up um, to access civil service jobs and to get fast tracked and to move up the ladder are very few and far between and aren't necessarily open to a more diverse community. Saying that, that's a challenge to understand how do you work that system? How does that system work for any of you? And like I said, finding a mentor in senior management, being able to understand and assess civil service principles, it is totally competency-based as well. So being competent at what you do. And I keep uh, saying this to sort of my nieces and nephews and, and younger members of the family. If you are passionate and uh, strong and effective at whatever you pick up in life, you will get noticed. And often, working in a, in a much more predominantly white environment, you have to work harder. That's just as simple as it is, work harder. And that's not a bad thing. If you acquire a craft and you are damn good at it, you will move up. Those challenges that I've already mentioned, they will not be challenges. If you are passionate about what you do, opportunities will follow you. Um, prior to joining the civil service, when I was doing my masters, I was, I was very keen on becoming a media professional, shockingly, and I, uh, in fact, did my masters just next door at the Institute of Education. And I did an internship at BBC. At the time, I, I got an opportunity at <coughs> World Service, and I started applying within the BBC, which is also a civil service uh, structure, <coughs> and um, I got offered a job as a PA. And I thought, what the hell, I'm doing my master's, I'm bright, I want to be a journalist, and I've got a job as a PA. I don't want to type for somebody, and I refused the role. So when I spoke to my mentor afterwards, he was shocked. He was like, hang on a second, you refused a role within the BBC, a paid job. I said, yeah, but it was typing, shiping, I don't want to do that. I want to be, the, be a producer, I want to make those documentaries, like, you know, BBC One and Two. Why, why would I want to take a typing job? And he sat me down and said, in all earnest, where do you think everyone starts? Where do you start? You don't start from the top. You start at, as a busboy, as the photocopy, as the chaiwala, as the doodwala, whatever it takes. You get in there. And he started recounting some of the biggest names in the BBC today as they started as runners, as attendants, assistants. He goes, you just shot yourself in the foot, love, big time. This is where it starts, and I see this in a lot of young people. I want to be there. I want to be there now. I want to be there yesterday. No, you've got to work for it. You have to work for it, and the civil service is no different to any other environment. It may seem sometimes like an easier ride to the city, to other industries. <coughs> you have to work as hard, and there are no two ways about it. And so just one point about my kind of take home to, to use to you all. Um, the learning I took away for over the last 25 years, and hindsight's a beautiful thing, if I had it 25 years ago, uh, I would have applied it. But uh, knowing your worth is so critical, especially as British Pakistanis and Muslims today. Knowing your worth. Whether you overvalue yourself or undervalue yourself, either is wrong. 
Know your worth and work. Thank you. All right, thank you. So, how to find the mentor? I have a career in the professional one. Uh, uh, thanks for the question, and yeah, that's really relevant. Uh, I have worked pretty much in the last 25 years or so in um, three key sectors, civil service being the main part of that. And um, I sought out people uh, who could potentially be mentors. And uh, this is, again, something I live by. If you don't ask, you don't get. And again, we are very shy of asking um, when it comes to sort of environments we're not particularly comfortable in. And if you do not ask, then no one's going to offer it to you. So uh, for instance, in the media environment, I sought out senior producer who I knew was kind of inclined to help sort of non-white uh, trainees. So again, know, know your environment. You've got to seek out help where it, you know, low-hanging fruit kind of scenarios. Don't go for someone who's, who's really hard-nosed and bolshy, they won't have the time for you. If you can seek out someone who wants to invest in, in their staff or in wider teams, there are people there. There are people who will give you few hours uh, over a week or a month, however much a commitment they can offer, but do ask. Do seek people out. A lot of organizations now have formal mentoring and buddying systems. And you see that in the finance sector and certainly now in the civil service. So in the civil service, I would never approach your line manager as your mentor. Bad mistake. And um, that's something I learned the, the, the hard way. Uh, line manager is there to line manage you. What you're seeking is a mentor who would advise and coach and guide you. Yes, we do. Um, we ask for so it. really important. Um, and every environment, working environment, you will be able to find one. Seek them out.